In this video, I aim to cover the basics of creating vector graphics for CNC laser cutting using Adobe Illustrator. There are plenty of vector art programs out there that can be used to create laser cutting graphics, such as CorelDRAW or Inkscape. But Adobe Illustrator just happens to be the one available to me in my shop. Illustrator can be a fairly overwhelming program for beginners. It has a lot of tools and capabilities that reach beyond creating laser graphics. Unfortunately, most of the online tutorials and resources that I've found for Illustrator are geared more for graphic artists and are not specifically for use with the CNC laser. So hopefully this video will show you enough tools to get you started. As with many Adobe programs, there are multiple ways to accomplish any task. So in the interest of keeping this primer short and sweet, I will be covering the main techniques that I use and you can explore others for yourself. So let's get started. I have a template file set up for laser work that has an artboard the same size as my laser bed. So the first thing I'm going to do is to open that up and do a save as to make a copy that I can edit without overwriting my blank template. For this demonstration, I'm going to be creating a coaster to cut out of one quarter inch thick maple plywood. This is going to require me to create an image in the center of the coaster that the laser will raster or engrave and a circle around the outside that the laser will vector cut to remove the coaster from the sheet of material. I'm going to start by bringing in my image. I have an image saved that I want to use for my coaster, so I'm going to click File, then Place, and then browse for the image I want to use. As you can see, when I place the image, it's way oversized. So to get it to be a little bit more manageable, I'm going to scale it down by clicking and dragging on one of the little corner nodes, but I don't want the image proportions to become distorted. So to keep the proportions locked while I drag, I'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard. Now it's a little closer to what I want. I'm going to zoom in on this area to get a closer look at what's happening. So I hold my alt key and scroll with my mouse to zoom in. Now my image is smaller, but still isn't the perfect size, so to fix that, I'm going to start tinkering with the object settings in this taskbar up here. Anytime you select an object, you should see the blue lines and nodes appear around the object, and you will also see these settings appear. The last two boxes are the width and height of the object in inches. I can type new sizes into these boxes to ensure that my object adjusts to the right size, in my case, 2 inches by 2 inches. If this chain icon is connected, the proportions of the object will be preserved when it resizes. But if I want to change either the width or the height without affecting the other, I can simply click the chain to unlink those proportions. I'll keep it linked for now. Right next to the width and height are the relative position of the object on the sheet, using X and Y coordinates. The upper left corner of my artboard is considered to be 0, 0, which is good because that corner is also 0, 0 on my laser bed. So when I position objects relative to that corner, it is like telling the computer exactly where I want the laser to burn that object on the sheet. The small grid next to the X and Y shows which anchor point, or which one of the nodes around the selected object, I'm positioning when I type in my X and Y coordinates. For this coaster, I'm going to be positioning everything based on its center, so I want to make sure that the center node is checked. Then I'm going to type into the X and Y boxes 2 inches. This will place the center node of my object 2 inches in on the X direction and 2 inches down in the Y direction. I'm going to place the centers of my next few objects in the exact same spot. Next, I want to establish the cut lines that the laser will make around the perimeter of my coaster. This is simply going to be a 3 inch diameter circle. The circle tool is hidden in the tool panel on the left under the rectangle tool. So by clicking and holding that rectangle tool, I'm given several more options. The ellipse tool is what I use to make circles, so I will select that. Now I can draw ellipses freehand by clicking and dragging my mouse and then adjusting the size later or I can just click once to get a little settings box that will allow me to type in the exact size that I want. I'm going to type in 3 inches high by 3 inches wide to get a perfect 3 inch diameter circle. 
Now with that circle selected, I can type in the same center point location I used for my earlier image, two inches in on the X and two inches down on the Y. The ellipse tool was the one I needed for this project, but any of the other drawing tools like lines, arcs, rectangles, polygons, and so on can be used in a similar way to create whatever artwork you're trying to draw. You can either draw what you want freehand and tweak and adjust it after, or you can type in exact sizes, angles, and locations as you go. You can also trim away segments you don't want using the scissors or eraser tools, or you can select and delete objects that you want to remove altogether. There are way too many tools available in Illustrator for me to cover in detail here, but the more you play and experiment with them, the sharper your skills will become. Now I need to make sure this circular outline I made gets cut on the laser and not just engraved. The way the laser determines where to cut and where to engrave is by looking at the thickness of a line. Any line thicker than .001 inches will get engraved, so I need to be sure the thickness of my outer circle is .001 inches. To do this, I use the selection tool and click on my outer circle. Then in the top taskbar, I need to click the box next to stroke. The stroke is the outline around my object. In my case, it's the circle. I need to type .001 into this box to get the right thickness, then be sure my stroke color is black. For more advanced laser cutting techniques like color mapping, you could set different lines to different colors in order to set different vector cutting settings within a single file. Once my stroke is .001 inches and the stroke color is black, I know my laser will view this line as a vector to cut. Now I'm ready to finish this file up. I want to add some text and a circular border around my image. I will add my circular border the same way I made my cut line using the ellipse tool. However, I'm going to type in 2 and 1 quarter inches for my size. And I'm going to set my stroke thicker so it will engrave and not cut. Finally, I will position it on the same center point as my other objects. Lastly, I want to add my text. There are a few options for creating text beyond just the standard text tool, and in my case, I want to curve the letters around the edge of the circle. To do this, I need to create another circle to use as a path for the letters. I'll make this one 2 and 3 8 inches in diameter and center it also. Now I will click and hold on the text tool to see the other text options. I'm going to select Type on a Path, and then select the new circle I just made. I can type the words I want, then use the text options in the top taskbar to change my font, font size, and other details. When I have the text looking just the way I want it, my project is all done. If I wanted to duplicate this image to cut a whole set in one file, I would just click the selection tool, then drag my mouse around all of my objects, copy them, and paste additional copies onto my artboard. If I was cutting these images from a sheet that already has a cutout in the upper left corner, I can just type new coordinates in for the objects to position them in a different place on the sheet. I'm going to save my work then click File and Print. I'll make sure my CNC laser is selected as the printer, then click Setup and Preferences to open up my laser's printer preferences window. In another video in this series, I explain how to configure print settings for different files and materials, and how to send files to the laser. Illustrator has hundreds of tools, options, and settings that can either be extremely useful or extremely confusing. Hopefully this video covered enough of the tools in Illustrator to get you started with your own CNC projects. If you want to see more, check out the other videos in this series, including the tutorial for creating a custom ruler for the CNC using Adobe Illustrator. Thanks for watching, and good luck!